Welcome back to the Marching to Badness College Basketball Zoomcast podcast with Coach Travis Steele of the Xavier Musketeers. Xavier is 6-1 and one right now. They're playing championship caliber defense and allowing only 59.6 points per game at 37.5% from the floor. That stat is 28th out of the 353 Division I teams. Coach, welcome back. Thanks for having me on, Ken. Oh, yeah. Now, you had two tough games over the weekend. I know you lost your first one to Iowa State. Then you beat a good Virginia Tech team. Nate Johnson, though, comes back last night. He scores 24 points as you guys win 78-45 over Central Michigan. Talk about having that game to kind of get your feet back under you. Yeah, it's good. You know, in Brooklyn, we were we played two good teams, Iowa State and Virginia Tech and found out a lot about our team. You know, we, we got, we had the flu kind of running through our team, um, <clears throat> which was unfortunate, but listen, it, it's things you can't control. Right. And, and uh, you kind of move on from, we had some guys step up in Brooklyn for us and we were able to salvage that trip by beating Virginia, a really, really good Virginia tech team. And it's kind of nice. Cause we had, we didn't practice for the three days after Brooklyn. It's cause well, I wanted our guys to recover their bodies uh, we've been going through a lot, like I said, with illnesses uh, running through our team. And and uh, it was good to get back with, with Central Michigan. You know, I thought Nate, you just said it. I mean, he's been playing terrific basketball for us. Um, he had 30 against Virginia Tech. He had 24 um, against Central Michigan. He's playing at a really high level, kind of been our offensive catalyst on that end. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about your defense, too. Uh, you know, we mentioned it's 37.5% and 59.6 per game. And you all are controlling the backboards. The Musketeers are, are flexing. They're swinging that sword on those backboards at 7.4 per outing uh, in a difference. Yeah. You know, we've been making a big point of emphasis on the defensive end, Ken. You know, I think defense travels, rebounding travels. That wins in our league. Um, you're not always going to be on offensively. You may have some off shooting nights. So if, you're, if your defense is good and you're a good rebounding team, it'll always give you a chance to win. And our size around the rim has been really uh, good for us defensively. You know, guys like Jack Nungy, Deontay Miles are 6'11". They're yeah. affecting a lot of shots around the rim. we got a lot of length and versatility. And then on the glass, we've been able to dominate. And that's got to be who we are, regardless of where we play, on both ends of the floor, defensively and offensively. We mentioned Nate Johnson already. He's leading you in scoring at 14.6 per game. Uh, the stat that I saw, you, you know, it's amazing. He's 47.7% from three. That's 21 out of 44 shots. So he's he's taking a high volume of shots and he's making those. Yeah. You know what's crazy, Ken, is he shoots even better in practice. He shoots actually 51% from three in, in live play and practice. And uh, he, I think he's the best shooter in the country. Our guys know to look for him. Um, he creates a ton of gravity out there, Ken. So if teams are going to try to take him away, it creates a lot of space on the floor for guys like Paul Scruggs, Colby Jones, Fremantle, Jack Nungy, all these guys that we have that are really talented. So Nate's a, a really, really, really important player on our team. You mentioned Colby Jones. Uh, he's figuring in all the statistical categories at 12 points per game, 9.3 rebounds to lead you and then 3.3 assist. Talk about getting that much efficiency out of the three-guard spot right now consistently. Yeah, Colby's like a Swiss Army knife. You know, he does everything well. Um, he can post you. He can drive it. He can make shots. He makes guys better. Um, he rebounds at an elite level mm -hmm. from the wing, elite. He's as good of a rebounding guard as I've ever been around. And then he defends, you know, so he's, he's, he's made a big jump for us, Ken, going into his sophomore year this year. He's playing like an all league guy. How have you seen his confidence take off then in this aspect? Was it there at the beginning or was it something that he had to see after the first couple of games? You know, it's funny is, is even as go back to his freshman year, his mm -hmm. first game ever, he came out of quarantine. He was in contact traced for, for 10 days and he practices one day then he we go play at our rival uh Cincinnati at their place and he plays terrific with one day of practice he just he was really well coached in high school he went to Mountain Brook High School down in Alabama mm -hmm. um Bucky McMillan who's now the head coach of Samford was his high school coach mm -hmm. and Bucky's a tremendous coach mm -hmm. um you know Colby has always kind of had that self-belief he's the same guy every day though Ken like he regardless of what's going on 
He's just, he's just flat line. He's the yeah. same guy. And it's, and that's hard to do in life, right? right? That creates a consistency and allows him to continue to grow. And a maturity too, even at a young age. Very mature in all aspects, like academically he's terrific off the court. He's just really low maintenance and he's a, uh, ter- obviously a tremendous basketball player as well. Uh, talking about Jack Nungy, I know he transfers over from Iowa, a very, uh, 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 consistent and a winning program under Fran McCaffrey. He's getting double figures and he's your second leading rebounder. How has he come in and fit the Xavier scheme? Yeah, it's funny. He came from a great program, like you said, Ken. I mean, Mm -hmm. Fran does a great job coaching. They've won big. Um, You know, he played along with Luke, uh, Luca Garza, who's Mm -hmm. obviously one of the best players in the country last year. And, and, um, you know, Jack is, he's, he's had all the experiences he's played in, in, in loud environments. He's, he's come off of hard losses. He's been injured before he's had to overcome a lot in his life and just his mentality and his day-to-day approach. Um, he's a great leader on our team. You know, he's the same guy every day. And he, he just impacts our team on both ends, his size and length on the defensive end can, he affects so many shots. Um, and he's a tremendous rebounder. Um, and he's just so dang smart. He's a heck of a lot smarter than I am, Ken. Um, he knows, and listen, he plays the five for us. He knows the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, every play. And he doesn't get reps at those other players. He is so intelligent. He's one of the smartest basketball players I've ever been around. He knows the playbook. And I'll tell you, as you get into March or down close to March, that's really going to that's really gonna resonate. Uh, because of, of, of if he's got that much familiarity and intelligence, imagine what he's going to swallow when he watches the other opponents. You're, you're That's doing- exactly right. He, yeah. he, 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 he sees things, even in games. Can he's a guy who come to a huddle and he'll, he'll say something to me, say, Coach, what, what if we do this? Mm-hmm. Hey, Jack, it's a yeah. great idea. Yeah. You know, like he, he's always thinking about how can he help the team. It has nothing to do with selfish. There's no selfish intentions for him which I love. He's just all about winning and all about the team. I like Paul Scruggs. I know he struggled scoring the last four games. And, and I was curious, what, how are you trying to work him out of that? Uh, he started the season. He had 23 against a good Kent State team and then 14 as you guys beat Ohio State. Yeah, I think Paul, he, he's trying to figure out our team too. You know, he's a point guard. You know, he, he can make guys better. Um, I think in Brooklyn against Virginia Tech, he didn't score a lot, but he had seven assists. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be one of the leading assist guys in the entire country. We have a lot of different guys on our team who can score. Mm-hmm. He has to pick and choose his time, just like he did in the Ohio State game. He dominated the game late. Mm-hmm. There's a big reason why we won the game. Same thing against Kent State, same thing against Niagara. He knows when to turn that thing on and when we need him to be aggressive. Talk about that Ohio State game for a minute. How much, you know, they're they're really good. I saw them play in Fort Myers last week against Florida. I, I'm curious about your your kids. How how much how how elated were they to be able to beat them? Because Ohio State generally doesn't play Xavier or Cincinnati. Yeah, number one, we were thrilled to be able to get them here in our Centos Center. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. our fans were, we were um now, the last time we played them was back in 2007 in the NCAA tournament in the round of 32 in Lexington, and they beat us. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we, we wanted to do it for the former players and our fan base, but uh, we, we were thrilled. You know, we expected to win. Um, I thought we had a really good game plan. Um, we had told our guys we had to be the tougher team, the more together team for 40 minutes, and we'd give, it, give ourselves a chance to have a really, really good team because Chris Holtman's a tremendous coach. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and EJ Liddell, man, you go on, on Zed key. They are big, they're physical, they're well coached. They're a terrific team. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you, you win that game uh, and then they turn around two nights ago. And in the second half, they absolutely undressed Duke. I, I was curious about if your kids had mentioned that component very much. And then is that another Avenue that's a confidence builder? Yeah, you know, we, we talk about all the teams we've already played and how they do, you know, whether obviously, you know, Virginia Tech won at Maryland, you know, right. and, and they're, that's going to be a great win for us because Mike Young, again, offensively is one of the best offensive minds in the entire country. Sure. Um, you know, but like, it, yeah, we follow these other teams and it gives our guys confidence. We can play with anybody. Mm-hmm. I really believe that if we, oh, yeah. it's all about us and it's just about our focus and mastering our system 
and playing hard and playing together. If we do those things, we can beat anybody in the country. I, I know you've got, I think, um, you got Cincinnati coming up after Oklahoma State. And yeah. then you're going to get Marquette and Villanova before Christmas. Uh, I'm curious about how you like having early Big East games. It looks like it's a trend now. Your, your guys, I think it's 11 team conference, but these teams with the 14 and 15 teams have kind of set the pace on that. They have. You know, it's interesting, Ken. Like you said, like, you know, we do a round robin in our league. Mm -hmm. So we play 20 league games, which is a lot. When, mm -hmm. I, when we first got into the Big East, it was 18 league games, right? Everybody mm -hmm. still play everybody twice, home and away, which I love because mm -hmm. that gives you a true champion, right? Because some of these leagues that have 14 or 15 teams, Shoot, it's luck of the draw a little bit with the schedule. It may be favorable to somebody compared to somebody else. So um, that's the one great thing about the Big East is it's round robin. But it's I think you have to put them a little bit before Christmas just nowadays because there's so many league games. But 20 league games, it's just hard. And there's depth across the boards in there like they there are, you know, in other conferences. I always say we're at – really, I think a power seven level, because I'll put the American in there with how they performed. And of course the big East. Yeah. I think, you know, you look at all the analytical numbers, I think it'll probably bear itself out, but I would say, you know, we're, I think we're the best conference in the country right now. I, you know, I, we, uh, we performed really, really, really well here in the non-conference, which is, which is really important, right? It's a, mm -hmm. you know, we all cheer for each other. We have a little group chat amongst the big East coaches we were playing in the Big East Big Ten Challenge, uh, the Gavit games. And we'd all text each other on our chat, you know, congratulations and whatnot. You know, we're pulling for each other, you know, because it helps our league. We want to represent the Big East the right way. Not bad here in the Gavit games for the Big East. And then the Big Ten won eight out of 14 against the ACC. Yeah, I think it just shows, again, we can compete with anybody. And I, I just – you talked about the depth of our league, Ken. I mean, you – I mean, think, I don't know where Marquette was picked in our league. They're pretty dang good. They got some really good wins. And, and Coach Smart does a great job. And, and, yeah, and they, got a, they got a lot of talent. And it's, it's top to bottom. You know, every, every team's good in our league. Anybody can be anybody on any given night. And that's what makes this league so fun. I was going to say DePaul is really showing some signs this year. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Coach Doublefield, first-year coach, man, he's crushing it. Yeah. I mean, they, they, he's got those guys playing hard. He's got them playing really well. Javon Freeman, Liberty's, I mean, he's been incredible. He's playing like a first team all league guard in the Big East right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, coach, you got uh, your next game Sunday. It's five o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2. It's the Oklahoma State Cowboys. This is an interesting basketball team. They had won five in a row before losing to Wichita State but they average 74 points a game and no one averages double figures. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mike Boyden does a great job. He gets those guys to play so darn hard. I feel bad for them too, by the way, with what the NCAA feel awful did to them. Awful because he has an NCAA tournament level team. I yeah. can tell you that yeah. from watching film. Yeah. Uh, they play hard. They have a lot of different guys that can do it. They share the ball. They play really fast. They turn you over. They're going to try to really pressure you. They rebound the ball. Um, mm -hmm. Great program. Mike's done an incredible job of building back up that program. He's got them really rolling. Well, Coach, you're doing an incredible job there at Xavier as well. I enjoy following your team. Love having you on and talking to you. I wish you the best here going forward in the season, and maybe we can touch base later. That sounds good, Ken. Anytime. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.